Hello everyone, welcome back to my outdoor street lighting display. What you're looking at here is a 1950s to 1960s General Electric Form 79D teardrop. The D indicates the teardrop style glass or what they called it the long globe on the catalogs and such back then. Ah yes, convenient timing indeed. The entire time I filmed the last video, the air conditioner next door did not come on. Anyways, it is summer, what can I expect? So, this here I got a long, long, long time ago, probably like almost five years ago now, I guess. I want to say it's five years ago. Got this off of Marketplace, just the optical assembly, the globe. It was for sale for about 20 bucks, I want to say, and the reasoning it was only the lens is because the guy's father was a lineman back in the day, locally, and uh, he took it down in the 60s or 70s when they were going from incandescent and mercury teardrops to cobra heads and buckets. I believe the downtown area, which is probably where this was from, went to the OV25s like down there. And uh, he turned it into a hanging light with some old swag kit type thing. And that's how it was sold to me, and I just took all that stuff out. And uh, at first, when I had this, I would hook it up uh, with a 175 watt NEMA head, but now I'm actually able to run it on a 400 watt mercury with a remote ballast and an incandescent head. I don't think that's supposed to hiss like that. That's not good. But, anyways. This is the mid-tier version, which has the replaceable lens, but it's on a retaining ring system instead of a hinge. So this, much like a clamshell would, uh, loosens up and you can pull this glass off. The low tier was just pressed or crimped onto the reflector assembly and it was one unit, so once it broke you just had to put a new one on. And of course the, the uh, upper tier is hinged like this Westinghouse is. So this is a very common, or was a very common, teardrop locally. Um, this and the Westinghouse pretty much dominated almost every small town around here, and many of the major cities had them too. And uh, what's really neat about this is it's actually local, and uh, it was my first ever teardrop at that. I got this, like I said, early in the days of me collecting streetlights, and a good collector friend of mine sent out this uh, GE head to uh, complete it. And it has the Bonalite slip fitter there, which a lot of these heads did. And I would take the lens off, but I mean, it's really kind of annoying <laughs> to open this up, so I think I'm just going to leave it on. It has a 400 watt uh, clear BT37 Iwasaki or I mercury lamp inside. Nothing too crazy, but also still a really good lamp. So, uh, this was GE's teardrop style. I think they ran this glassware from like the late 30s all the way into the 60s, maybe even the early 70s. Um, so, it was a long production run of the same style. And they use this pattern in the back of Form 400 glass. Uh, kind of, in a way, you can see it's a little bit similar. And then they used it on the M1000, the very early M1000 glass, and the 1000 watt GE Form 402 clamshells, which used the same glass as an M1000. They also used this lens style on gumballs, of course. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of a unique shape. It's cool that each teardrop from each brand has a sort of unique shape to it. My Joslin one is very pointy. The Westinghouse is very blunt tipped and a lot skinnier on the lens. And this is kind of an acorn almost in a way. That's why these specifically have been referred to a lot as an acorn as well, because these are the only ones that can kind of resemble an acorn pretty good out of all the different teardrops that were made. It's not particularly spectacular in construction. The lens is somewhat thin 
ish. It's not as thick as all my other two drops, and the stamping of the reflector is kind of on the thin side too, but again, it's a GE product from this time period where they were experimenting with lower cost options. And also, this is a mid-cost model. The hinged one may have a thicker lens. I don't know, I don't own one, so. Hopefully soon I'll have one, but until then, I'll just have to guess. So I'll go ahead and fire it up here. It is operating off of a period correct GE ballast can, which a lot of these were actually installed with back in the day. This ballast can is from 1953. And this was originally hooked up to a Form 109. And it's on a fairly commonly paired to these teardrops national manufacturing arm. So this is a very nice local style setup that I've created back here. The only way to make it even more special is if I put it on this version of the national arm with the brace, but since the GE ballast cam was already paired with that arm, I felt it would be better to just keep it where it was and use this arm instead. It still looks really good, but I think it would have looked better with the brace. But I can always do that another time. And I will make a video of this, the Joslin and the Westinghouse teardrops with incandescent lamps in them. I'll probably use a different wattage for each video to make it kind of different. I do want to see these in incandescent. Surprisingly, I never have put incandescent in any of these. Um, it's just been 175 watt or 400 watt mercury. And one last thing I forgot to mention, this is my second take of this video, is it has an interesting house side shield, which is kind of hard to see in the day because it is reflective, but it's this kind of double layered metal um, shield sort of thing that does actually have a purpose. It sends a lot of light forward and down as opposed to in this big circle. Because before buckets were a thing, this was the big light all around type of fixture from above because there was no real, you know, light distribution controlling lenses, lenses and reflectors at the time. They just uh, did this. So to, comp to uh, compensate for that, they just put this little shield in. My Jocelyn teardrop has the same type of thing. It's finished in the Alzac aluminum. The Westinghouse one does not, but they did offer it. This one just was not ordered with that for some reason. And it has a little chain up there to hold the optical assembly. And you can see up here the lens, the glass type is GE207. When I got it, this was a very yellowed uh, glass, but I got it all cleaned out. So now it actually looks really good. But yeah, it's really neat to have this. Um, like I said, I've had it for a long time. This was my first ever teardrop. And I should have hung it up when I lived in my last place on that tree setup, but it didn't really occur to me at the time to swap out the lights much. I don't know why I didn't do that. I just didn't. And it took me a couple of years of living in this house to get the bright idea, no pun intended, to actually start putting up lights back here. So this is a fairly new thing that I could have been doing for a while, but I never came, the idea never came to me. But I guess uh, now is better than never. So, yeah. Um, even though I don't find these to be the most remarkable in quality, like the head and everything else, it still is a really great fixture. I've always liked how these look. Um, again, I grew up with these. There's still a lot of the hinged variety and some that aren't uh, locally. Um, so, it still has a big place in my childhood heart, I guess, if that makes any sense for like lights I grew up with and such. I can name a bunch of towns that had these along with the Westinghouse teardrops. And there's actually still a fair amount of the hinged GE teardrops locally. They're some of the last types. Oh, nice, I caught a little bird squabble up there on the camera. <laughs> cool. But, uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I might say that, well, I might just speak the facts that GE is not the best brand on earth, but it doesn't mean I don't like the stuff. 
I mean, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't own it. I paid money for this, so I like it. You know, it's true for everything I have. So there's no point in uh, getting upset about it. It's just sometimes things aren't made as good as other stuff, and I might still like it, but I'm not going to lie to myself and pretend that it's great just because I like it. You know, I can like things that aren't that great. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, these are still not the worst quality by any means, but compared to everything else I have that's like it, these are definitely not the best. And that's just, that's just the reality of it with the GE stuff mainly. But there was other stuff that was cheap too. I mean, that's just how it is. Not everything American made is good, and that's an okay thing to admit. But, uh, again, that said, I still really like these because they were everywhere as a kid, and there's still a decent population of them around me. So, yeah. Of course, all of them are HPS because that's probably the only reason they're still there. But like I said in the Westinghouse video, uh, Westinghouse teardrop video, for whatever reason, all these cities and towns, or maybe just the utility itself, just went on a crazy rampage against only mercury vapor teardrops. The clamshells got to live, and a lot of them still exist today, and the mercury cobras got to live, and the mercury buckets got to live, but the gumballs or teardrops, although most of them were teardrops, all just kind of got killed within the last eight years or more, except for the ones in Dallas that are HPS. And those were converted to HPS in the 90s. They were originally either incandescent or mercury vapor before that. I don't know what it is. Um, they're easy to work on. They don't... I don't get it. It's, it's a very odd thing. Maybe it's because they don't like the distribution patterns, maybe. They don't mix with the cobra heads and clamshells, because clamshells actually can swing the bat pretty equally or close to it with uh, cobra heads in terms of light distribution and so forth and brightness on the road. But these were always a little bit more dim because there's a lot more optical loss due to the way the reflector is and the lamps being vertical instead of horizontal and the lenses not having any uh, distribution boosting qualities to them, meaning that they just kind of spread or diffuse light a little bit. It's not directing, if that makes any sense to any of you all. That's my only logical explanation that helps me sleep at night, other than they just don't like teardrops. Because <laughs> I, up until very recently, there weren't any uh, utility-owned teardrops at all. Or, sorry, other way around. Up until recently, there were some, and then about two to three years ago, they all vanished. The last ones vanishing was just early this year or very late last year. Um, I've been trying to find places where they still are using these, but I can't find any. Although, in my defense, I haven't looked in every corner of this state, as this state is huge, and I only have so much free time. <laughs> which is not that much, so yeah. But uh, a lot of these places would remove these and then put up uh, reproduction teardrops in their place, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Why not just keep the old ones and retrofit them to like LED corn cobs or something or whatever. HPS, new Nema heads, whatever. But, I mean, you'll never understand unless you're working in the utility why they do stuff, I guess. And. Uh, to me, I just view that as a kind of a waste of money. But maybe it makes sense to them, I don't know. But yeah, it's nice to have a piece of history, especially local history. As uh, again, these are not common anymore, and they once were, and that's a shame. So uh, with that little slight history lesson and rambling on about stuff, looks like we are uh, running good here. The GE Ballast is in good health. It hasn't warmed up fully yet, but it is an eye lamp. These things, for whatever reason, on no matter what ballast I use, take forever to warm up. That's just the way that these bulbs are. I don't know why that is, but every single eye lamp I own is slower than the rest. But I'll take it. That ain't bad. That's a good power factor. 
It's a pretty good power draw. Although the voltage drop kind of sucks, but something else is probably running in the house. So, without further ado, that is the end. And uh, I will be back for more videos soon. I've got plenty more to film. But I figured it'd be fun to do a little teardrop week here with the three teardrops I have. And finally get those filmed. Of course, the Jocelyn is inside the house until I get a proper way to mount it without tape. We've had some storms the last couple of nights and I would truly, truly, truly hate myself forever if I left it outside and let it get blown off the arm and shattered because that one is the only intact version of that glass in existence. And yeah, that would be really bad. So yeah, um, more to come of course. It is getting, well, I say it's getting hotter, but it's actually going to drop down in temperatures again. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, still summer, so I'll try my best to get videos out. They might start being later in the day uh, to compensate for the heat as the temperatures do inevitably rise. But for now, it's a cool like 79 degrees right now, and it's June in Texas, so I'll take that as a win. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.